the balls on this lad. Just walk straight up to Lee. He's like, hey, big boy, what's up? Check out what I got. It's time to check out my fellow Brit. Good old Benny boy on the Barbecue Man 666 account. Looking to fry Lenok in an HRE mirror matchup. Let's get to it. Because we are taken to good old Mongolian Heights for this bout between these two Leviathans of Age of Empires. Well, I'd say Leviathans of uh, StarCraft in their own way as well. It's always cool seeing these two. I think they've got like a, a deep admiration and love for each other as well. It seems like they're good friends. So it's always fun to see them, you know, clashing. Getting a read for each other. Always trying to one-up. And Lenok already trying to one-up with a very early pullout of the Villager to try and construct the dock. Doesn't have the required wood mm. just yet, so it does need to fix that problem. Uh, but it shouldn't take him too long. Meanwhile, on the other side, it looks like the Muslim hasn't actually pulled for this just yet. Remember the sacrifice that's been made by Lenok to do this, by the way. He doesn't have the wood for house yet. This might be a little bit tight. He will look to at least go for the dock. And looks like... No similar pull just yet for the Muslim. Lee did also go for two scouts, so it feels like Lenok is very clearly ahead right now. I don't know if this was intentional of uh, uh, Ben. It feels like there's a missed trick here. Is he just trying to ignore wood? Because I'm like, yeah, he is. He's actually just ignoring the sea entirely. What? In a mirror matchup as the HRE on Mongolian Heights. What is Ben up to? He's got me very curious right now. Looks like he's going to prioritize a quicker feudal. In theory, this could actually work out. Like, if, Because remember, whenever you go for the dock play, you actually delay your feudal timing by about two minutes. In theory, the Muslim can beam to the punchline, get up into feudal first, and then if he rushes a dock, he can get galleys out ahead of Lenok. This might actually be a very high-level play. I mean, I'm expecting high-level plays. It's Ben and, and Lenok, right? But the way he's doing this is very crafty. And I don't think Lenok's going to expect it either. And it looks like it is going to be fine for Demuslim to do this because look how many sheep he's returning. 11 on their way back to base. With the HRE Holy Inspiration over his food gathering, he will be able to boom up very fast into Feudal and then switching over to the wood, he'll be able to afford the initial galleys before Lenok can even be up in Feudal himself. This is pretty crafty. Now, there are some alternatives. It could be a ram rush. It could be a horseman spam. I'm, I'm expecting the play onto the riverside, though, just to try and deny equity there. We'll see for sure. If I see a Mindwork Palace, there is a, a world in which the Muslim is just going for an outright ram rush. But I don't like the idea of ram rushes against the HRE. They're very hard to pull off because of the delay. Remember that the emergency repairs actually repairs a lot of damage. As you can see, 150 health every one second, meaning you heal, you heal 3,000 damage. And if you think about the maths on this, like a ram every five seconds does 200 damage. It's very hard to outdo the emergency repair rates with early ram rushes because of how expensive each independent ram is and how little the HRE has to care and how little they have to pull in terms of villages to offset damage you do. So... Mine went past is going to be a choice. The Muslim's still keeping the options open. I'm still feeling like this is going to be the play onto the river, though. He's already switching some people over onto the wood. In fact, it's going to be five people total. And the prelate might want to shift across. For the moment, he's keeping him on the gold. I think right now, yeah, only one prelate on both sides. Lenok, of course, is going to be notably delayed on his tech up. Is now going with the gold because he's bolstering his food. And this could catch him off guard if it is the play I'm expecting, the one we already assessed because you've already invested four boats you're already past the cap of which you can protect in the dock and also if your opponent gets an edge on pushing galleys he's going to stay ahead and trust me folks if you're like four boats in you haven't realized the value of this dock expansion i feel like usually it's around six or seven is when you start to reach a point where you feel the returns coming your way from investing into docks and fishing Interestingly yeah. enough, the Muslim is not rushing up. Only one villager building up the Mindwork Palace. Instead, he's going onto the stone. It looks like this is actually going to be a multi-TC play out of the Muslim. So, no intent to block Lenok on the waterfront, but will instead play for his own economical benefits on his side of the map. An interesting choice here. Two differing approaches to the HRE in this mirror matchup. You love to see it as well. Just to see which one is going to take home the cake, right? Like, this is what we live for, you know? It's kind of whoop to do when everyone's doing the exact same thing and you're looking for that small kind of optimal difference. It can be educational, but maybe doesn't deliver the hype you're expecting. This will, though. This is two different build orders entirely. 
clashing to see who, uh, who will come out on top. And that's why the Muslim made this so slow on the build-up, by the way. That's why he only invested two villages, is he wants to make sure he's got enough stone and wood to instantly go into a secondary TC the moment he clocks Feudal. And it's going to be a mind-wet pass for Lenok as well. Lenok isn't going on the stone, though. What? I'm not expecting him to. He's already shown his hand by going to the docks, and this is info fed back to the Muslim. I don't think Lenok has spotted this stone mine at the back either. And why would you? Like, the layout, the, you can't run up this side. You'd have to come around the east side. I don't think he knows. In fact, we can check for sure. He has been in this area, but I don't know if it's been recent. So I feel like this is hidden info. <laughs> the Muslim essentially just dragging Lenok back, going, look at my base. And the Muslim, he is actually going for it. He's pulling the villages. This should be the 4TC, though, on the deer and on the wood. An interesting play, if so. So not even going to hide the fact that he's going for multi-TC. Or is he going for the... Oh, my God. He's going for the TC instead of the outpost. Okay. Yeah, you've sold me, Benny boy. I wondered if it was just going to be a nice fort base into an outpost next to it. But no, instead, the balls on this lad just walk straight up to Lee. He's like, hey, big boy, what's up? Check out what I got. A shiny town center. And you know what the cool thing about this is, by the way? It's the fish. The fish that admittedly something going to be depleted. But you gather food from waterfronts as villages from the shoreline fish at one food per second. That's higher than boar, by the way. Boar is 0 0.9 a second for villages by default. So this is actually more efficient <laughs> for you to gather off of. So he's going to get value in this area and he's going to fall back for the deer as well. So overall, this is about to get hype. Lenok will at least crack up. He's going to have to crack out of here. Doesn't want to be in the area. TC fire coming out. We'll look the folks fine at the fishing boats. Not good enough. Remember that the TC... Although very bulky, does not get bonus damage against the fishing boats. In fact, nothing does. It, it's very confusing to people because if you build an outpost and it says plus damage to ship, you can see this is labeled ship, but for some reason, fishing boats just don't take bonus damage. I don't know. Like, I'm trying to figure if they ever did. I'm not sure because I, I wasn't the only one that had this issue. I remember once you pro players when we talked about it in the previous game, they're like perplexed as to whether it ever was the case. Does seem a little bit silly, though, considering you labeled something ship and it doesn't take damage as it should. But then again, like, workers in general, I think it's the... You, you know what it probably is? If we look at it from a coding standpoint, I think it's the worker label. Um, worker labeled units don't take bonus damage from anything, and I'm assuming there's something written in that uh, that variable and that function, essentially, like, like the, in the, the container that says they don't take damage, they can't take bonus damage. That would be my assumption. I think it's the worker tile override ship. I'm not going to get into that, though. That's, that, that's like, we do nerd talk here, but that's like a whole other level of nerd talk. That's getting into, like, programmer talk. But essentially, when you, like, you create count systems like this, you're going to, like, tag each of these. So, you like, cavalry, light mail, and then you have, like, light as well. You can have ship and worker. And each of these, like, each of these referenced um, tags will have, like, within them certain fields contains to, like, take bonus damage from X or Y, depending on how they've, they've coded it, basically. And when it gets referenced, my assumption is that worker overrides any other tag that is on the unit. And workers' tags will be empty from bonus damage. There's, there's none that, that do bonus damage. But looky, looky. While we talk about that, Burgrave piles on both sides. These guys are mirroring each other in a lot of ways. In the meantime, Lenok was able to shift down the south side so he will renew the dock line and keep the food source alive. Differing approach. One going for the fishing. One going for the secondary TC. Bolstering it now with the Burgrave, so not going to be easy to breach here. Speaking of breaching. An attempt to get through this wall is going to feel futile for the Muslim right now. Income per minute, still in favor of Lenok, notably. Not for long. The Muslim feels a little bit more stable here. Shifting back and forth from the fish can be a little bit deceptive. And remember that both players, they are sacrificing a lot of their eco right now. To build up into the next level, baby. Slightly not will beam the punchline, but the Muslim not far behind him. Scalability-wise, the Muslim is still lagging behind. Remember that economically, each of these fishing boats are a little bit better than uh, than your villies. At least if you're gathering off something like sheep. Right 
now. It looks like the Muslim, I feel like he needs to go a little bit faster than his opponent right now. Like this double TC versus the fishing is a little bit deceptive. I feel like any delay, like in the next five minutes, if there's not any sort of pressure applied, Linok kind of has a more cruise mode game. So we'll see if he can actually breach, if he wants to get aggressive. The stance right now, Linok is going to be pushing the Hulk first. And it looks like the Muslim has no answer right now, which has me a little bit concerned because a Hulk could blitz any attempt to cross this area. And that's what I was worried about. When you don't have the dock control, when you don't have any option at all to go into Hulks, this is what you're vulnerable to. First one comes out, Man at Arms instantly gone. Scout's also going to be forced to garrison in here. And you see bonus damage coming out. Is going to hurt the Hulk, is going to force it away. But you do need to be careful. This TC is not exactly what I call mighty bulky. Only 2,400 HP on it. Which means every shot from the Hulk is doing 50 damage. Should Linok get up to, say, three Hulks, your TC is just going to be gone. And Linok, in fairness, would benefit from building another Hulk down here. You don't want to allow a, a crossover because the Muslim clearly wants to go on land and he wants to go fast. For the moment, he's going to move those man at arms down to the south side. Looking for a breach point. And no reaction easily achievable. Looks like Leonok's going to start to wheel down now, but that's going to be TC fire coming his way as the double scout garrison is going to be effective. A lot of damage, in fact, being done to the Hulk. And it looks like he's going to add a few more people. He's like, oh, oh what, what's that? We need more bow firers. Let me just hop inside. Extra, was it 35 damage being done per shot? 30 damage overall per shot because the missile resistance. And this Hulk not looking very healthy right now. I actually love the way the Muslim played. He, he's just going north again. He's Benny. I mean, it's appropriate for a guy called Benny Boy. He's going to Benny Hills him. Linux going to lose the Hulk. He has no choice. It's just dead. <laughs> that play was slick out of the Muslim. Oh, boy. That, that was so well played, actually. Just back and forth here, there. there. He knows that the Hulk has to keep going past this TC. This TC is so clutched by the Muslim. It's definitely delivered. We wondered if it was going to be worth it compared to going on the docks, going on the fish, and we have our answer, folks. This is pristine play out of the Muslim. However, Lenok will not bow that easily. You can see building up a defense force now, 16 man at arms and a Lang's deck in the mixer. On this slow slew in of troops, it's going to be problematic. Man at arms. Ooh, they're struggling to get away. The charge speed is allowing Lenok to gap close. Looks like it's not going to last long enough. In the wheel back, you can see the Muslim. He's hard investing now. He sees the count. He knows he needs to make this in his favor. And he does have the two-handed mace upgrade. Meanwhile, Lenok only has the mace. Fight underway. Spread out in the choke point. Lang's neck trying to wrap around, but being targeted by the TC intentionally. So gets rid of that cleave damage. Just spread out. Looking reasonable for the Muslim on the defensive. Remember that he's producing you. He's instantly getting in the fight. Meanwhile, Lenok's doing the Congo line of death right now. And it will turn into his death very quickly here. Trying to hold on, but the TC is definitely adding in a, a beneficial amount of fire here. Trade outs looking fairly even. And Linok with a consistent push right now. He's the one with reserves to still work with. Langsneck are starting to come out now for the Muslim, however. And the Muslim, he recovers here. Now up to free Langsneck and Linok in a frustrating situation. He can no longer deal with the force in front of him. He cannot deal with the TC. He must give over ground. And he's not pushing Langsneck anymore. So make no mistake, folks, that this fight, it's deceitful to what it looks like. 14 man at arms versus nine and three Langsneck. Langsneck can do a lot of work there. So you have to show it appropriate respect. Especially with more Langsneck coming out. Linok is going to engage. The Muslim slow to react. And this is an opportunity to cleave in. Also, these Langsneck are really frustrating. Like, they move faster than man at arms. So if you micro it correctly, you can actually... You can easily wrap on your opponent, right? You can get optimal positioning for maximum cleave damage. You don't want to disengage, click them straight away. You don't want to, like, run them in with different attack orders. Otherwise, the Langsneck will move forward of your man at arms and get attacked first. But it does allow you to wrap around the flanks faster. The Muslim chasing away Lenok. Lenok actually going to take this fight, and it looks pretty good for him right now. The Muslim not really getting as much damage as he would like. He's just going to be overwhelmed. To fight, clearly going in the way of Lenok as he'll hold on. 16 more man at arms ready to march forward in the meantime. The Muslim was forced on the defensive by one or two man at arms diving into his eco lines. Not getting as much damage as they would have liked. 
And you can see both of them avoiding going into farms. Of course, at the moment, this benefits Leenok more as he is still on the, the fishing. But the fish are drying up fast here. Now there's nine arms once more in the breach. Hard to torch this down, though. Most of your repairs could really delay him. He's going to commit. The Muslim is going to wait. He's going to rush this. He knows he can easily e-repair this up. There's just not enough torches being hurled for it to be a true threat yet. There it is. We'll trigger it now. Stabilizing against the damage. It's still hefty what's coming out here. Might still lose the TC. If he doesn't fight soon, the Muslim needs to go. Farm switch up is costly as well at this stage of the game. It's delaying the push out for him, but he needs more food. And there it is. It's going to force the conflict. Langsnake, 10 in the mix. Now this damage is going to come out. Look at the front line for Linok. How quickly it's going to fall apart here. Nice micro switching them back to make sure the man at arms take the aggro. And this fight going the way clearly of the Muslim. The Muslim with the clutch play in the Langsnake. The hard push is good enough. Linok going to lose the entire army. Forced into retreat. 15 mana arms, 7 lanks next still standing, and Leenok having to back away with the switch up now into the archery ranges. He needs a ranged composite. He can't win the lanks neck battle anymore, and he knows it. So now the push forward. Hello turns of tables. And look what the Muslim's going after. It's the eco. It's the eco. And there's a lot of eco down here. Not just the dock, but also he's going to notice a bonus when he gets down here. 15 villages and the prelate as well. It's going to force a reaction. Leenok needs to defend this. He can't be without this gold right now. Can't be without this villager force. Engagement is going to buy him some time. Needs to shift away, but Leenok isn't doing that just yet. Instead, the Muslim sees it all now. He's going to take the fight on the front line. Langsteck still giving the edge over to the Muslim as he cleaves through his counterpart. But now with Langsteck in the mix and the crossbows as well, Leenok should be able to stabilize. And it looks like he will live to mine another day as it wasn't a hard pull. The Muslim didn't go straight for the Vili line, which would have crippled Lenok's ability to push more troops. That being said, the Muslim will not slow down. Second wave incoming. Military lead still with Benny Boy and the eco lead notably in favor of Red HRE now. This time, he will go straight for the eco line, the wood line, in fact. Just a few lags neck in the mix. With good positioning, could do a lot of damage, but Leenok is quick to react and peel back the villies before they would be exploited. We'll sacrifice one or two still hanging around. In fact, I don't think that was... Oh, wow. That was... Wow. That wasn't even a good play on Leenok. That was just fortunate timing. He wasn't pulling villagers to get out of danger, even though he saw it. He was pulling villagers to go onto the mill. Wow, that was lucky. Leenok could have lost 10 plus villages, at which stage you can't even compete with the Muslim's production. The Muslim is going to force you to migrate to the front line. Ram has been built, but Leenok, I, I, this isn't looking good, folks. This is looking really bad for Lee. Unless he can take an amazing fight where he completely out micros Ben, Ben is just kind of reaching a point where he cruises into a win. And Leenok will continue to fall behind. Remember that the fishing's kept him afloat for a while, but he's running out of fishies at the backside here. Once that's gone, he can't even compete. He still hasn't made the farmland transition, something that we already saw Ben do. In fact, he's done it a lot. As you can see, it's 16 farms already online for him, and more coming. Last step, man, arms chasing in. No front line in position for Leenok. Ah, this is looking done. I, I just don't see how you come back anymore. It's a clean out scale. The Muslim with the clutch play with the TC, denying so much equity in the center, controlling the center pass and ensuring Linok can never flood through, has crippled any way for the Kareen to get back into this game. With that many idle villagers, with them doing nothing, Linok feeling helpless in this one. It looks like it is going to be a win for Ben as the Muslim will take the dub in the HRE mirror matchup. Yeah, really well played actually by Ben. I think we kind of uh, had enough time to assess what this came down to. It was just really good scaling. Uh, looking back at Leenok's play, I think the, the biggest mistake was like getting baited in with the Hulks. Realistically, you could probably afford to go for a Hulk on the north, on the middle pass and the southern pass, and I think you're better off. He ends up losing the Hulk. He doesn't get any value out of it, and then it opens up both points for the Muslim to flood through. I think if you had the second Hulk, you delay this a little bit. You're still fishing, and then maybe you can go for a second TC yourself, but... Given the play by the Muslim, it was just like really high level stuff. Like not many people would pull a TC on the waterfront the way he did, but you can see how valuable it can be. Like that bonus damage on the ships adds up a lot better than what you'll get out of an outpost and you have emergency repairs, which means 
Funnily enough, as the HRE, this play is less risky than any other Sith because you don't even need villagers to repair damage being done. You can just instantly click one button and be resolved of any consequences. And I think that's a powerful tool that Demosum has done a phenomenal job of identifying. I don't feel like I see many people aggressively using emergency repairs like this, but you can see how powerful it is in the right situation.